Hi, I'm Dr. Ashegun Henry. I'm a professor at MIT, and from where I sit, climate change is the most important problem in the history of mankind. And that's because it's one of the most imminent threats to our survival as a species on this planet. So in order to solve this problem, we basically have to do a complete overhaul of our entire energy infrastructure, switching from fossil fuels to renewables. Now what's amazing is that the price of solar and wind has dropped dramatically over the last two decades. The problem is that you don't get the electricity whenever you want it. And the fact that renewables cannot provide dispatchable power on demand limits how much of the grid's electricity they can provide. So as the plot shows on the right, even as the amount of storage capacity, for example, in California reaches 30 gigawatts, which is similar to the generation capacity, it's hard to push past 50% penetration without throwing some of the renewable energy away. So storage is the key and we need lots of it. Now the first question people usually ask is, okay, why not just use lithium ion batteries? And the answer is simple, they cost too much. Now, a number of independent studies have looked at what it will take to decarbonize the grid and they've all come to the same conclusion shown on the bottom left. First, and surprisingly, efficiency is actually not all that critical. As long as you're above about 35% efficiency, you can make money doing arbitrage. So it's useful to sacrifice efficiency if it buys you lower cost per unit energy, or CPE. Second, the plot on the right shows that CPE is by far the most important parameter, which is why the colors change in the horizontal direction. And in order for renewables with storage to displace fossil fuels fully, we have to get to the blue region in the bottom left where it's darker than the color range for natural gas shown in the legend. Number three, to go fully renewable across the nation, independent studies have shown that we need a technology with a CPE less than $20 a kilowatt hour. So that's what we need in order to save our species from extinction. So the next question is what options do we have? Lithium ion batteries are at about $150 a kilowatt hour now. They're slated to maybe one day get down to $50 a kilowatt hour, but that's still too expensive because we need less than 20. Pumped hydro is at about 60, but still too expensive and it's geographically limited. And then there's pumped heat storage, which is cheaper, but not cheap enough. And it also has a slow response associated with the fact that they're using a turbine, which is too slow to meet the ramp rate needed when the sun goes down and the solar turns off. So what else is there? Well, what we are developing in my lab is a radically different approach. Since efficiency isn't the main thing that matters, we can get to super low cost by storing heat instead of electricity directly. So the way the system works is we take in electricity and we run resistance heaters that are basically giant incandescent light bulb filaments at 2500 degrees C which is glowing white hot. Then that heats up liquid metal to 2400 degrees C and we pump it over to a giant storage unit filled with cheap graphite blocks. We heat them up to 2400 C and this is how we charge up our thermal battery. Then whenever you want electricity back, we pump the liquid metal back through the blocks to remove the heat and carry it over to our power conversion unit. Now what's different here is normally you'd use a turbine to convert heat to electricity, but that's too slow. So here, the reason we jack the temperature up so high is so we can do the conversion using photovoltaics. And these aren't your normal solar cells. These are specially designed solar cells that have highly reflective mirrors on the back. That way any below band gap light that's not converted into cells gets reflected back to the hot piping infrastructure which preserves the energy so it's not wasted. As the tin flows through, it cools and it, uh, its heat gets converted, and then it gets routed back to the hot graphite blocks to be reheated, and this is how we discharge our thermal battery. The next question you might have is how much does it cost? And the short answer is that our cost estimates for the full system come to less than $10 a kilowatt hour. That's more than 10 times cheaper than lithium ion batteries, and half as much as what all the analyses say we need in order to save the species. Another big question that should come to mind after some crazy guy says we're going to pump liquid metal at 2000 C is how are you going to pump it? And this is the technological breakthrough that started it all. About four years ago we figured out how to pump liquid metal using all ceramic or graphic, graphite mechanical pumps and seals and we have a paper in Nature describing the first instance where we pumped at 1400 degrees C which is in the Guinness Book of World Records and more recently we pumped above 2000 C. So this idea of building an all graphite infrastructure to pump liquid metal all held in an inert environment is now possible. So to summarize, we've demonstrated pumping, we've demonstrated the materials work, we've recently demonstrated high efficiency thermal photovoltaic cells via our collaborators at NREL, and we just set a new world record for efficiency above 40%. We've built and we've tested each component separately, 
And so the remaining steps are to demonstrate the full system as a lab scale prototype over the next year. And then I'll be leading a startup company looking to raise money for a pilot demonstration at the one megawatt hour level. And if everything goes well, we'll be looking to scale up and get this technology deployed as fast as possible in hopes that we can mitigate climate change fast enough to save our species from potential extinction.